Jason Days. I am Madison and today's video is the birth story of our Mr. Oliver Ray Dyson. He was born on June 1st so that makes him six days old today. He was born at 10 19 a.m. and it was a home birth. My second home birth. Second baby born right here in the living room and third baby of Mark and I. Our first baby was born in a birth center in Texas, and then we moved here to Iowa. And Iowa does not have birth centers, so for baby number two and three, we did the home birth route. With our second baby, I didn't make it in the water. Actually, she came so fast that the midwife was not here yet, and I ended up catching her and holding her for about 20, 25 minutes before the midwife got here. So by the time I was pregnant with him, home birth was the way we wanted to go, thinking his birth could be even faster than our second. I just wanted to be in my place of having the baby as soon as labor started. Labor started that morning, June 1st, it was a Saturday morning at 3.45 a.m. Our oldest son, Theodore, had woken up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, so I was already awake at the time of my first intense contraction at 3.45. At least I didn't think I had fallen back asleep. I let myself have a couple of them before waking up my husband and I think by the second or third intense contraction which by, at this point they were maybe seven to ten minutes apart Mark had woken up on his own and he laid back down in bed and I said you may not want to go back to sleep you might want to go downstairs and fill up the pool. And he looked at me and said, are you serious? And <laughs> I think he said something like, oh darn, I want to go back to sleep. Because all earlier that week, I had been having what felt like real contractions that were waking me up in the night, but not sticking around. So I was able to fall back asleep. So when he said, are you serious? He was wondering, is this just another night of feeling what felt like real contractions, but then it ending up not being labor. And I did hear that that could be something called pro prodromo. Well, I don't know how to say that word, like a pre labor. You're just having contractions days leading up to actual labor, which could make the labor itself go quicker. So I think that's what, it maybe was. So I continued to lay in bed for just a short while. I wanted to make sure those intense contractions were still coming back, especially before I called the midwife, since it was 3.45 or at this point maybe 4.30 in the morning. I didn't want to call and wake up my midwife that early if it wasn't something she needed to be here for. But Mark at this point was up, walking around, um, getting dressed, things like that. So we came downstairs. I did end up having a few more intense contractions. We came downstairs. We immediately put the liner in the pool, hooked up the hose to the sink, and Mark started filling up the pool.
love story from a lady who had success with the Bradley method, which is, so you're laying face down, one leg up, trying to relax through every contraction. So that was going to be my main strategy for this birth. So I went immediately to the couch as Mark was filling up the pool and laid face down for a few contractions and they were still really intense. So we called the midwife because I didn't want it to end up like last time and her not be here. Because I thought I wasn't progressed enough. So we decided to call her right away this time and she ended up getting here around five o'clock in the morning. Mark and I, while we were waiting, we were just sitting here talking. He prayed with me and I turned on some piano hymns, which was very calming. And then we kept the lights low and all of those things seemed to help. Every time a contraction came on, I made a conscious thought to relax every single muscle in my body when the contraction was first coming on. So I relaxed every single muscle in my body until I felt that contraction start to subside. And that helped so much. My pain was manageable, but I believed my contractions were so far apart, maybe because I was so relaxed and in a really comfortable position. I wasn't progressing as fast as I did with my first two. By the time the midwife got here, which was maybe five, a little after five, 5.30, my contractions were pretty far apart, but when they were coming on, they were intense. So she asked if I wanted to get up and walk around, that might help. So I walked out of the living room, around the kitchen, just pretty much pacing this main floor, hoping I'd get contractions back to back. I laid down in another room on this floor in the Bradley Method just to be by myself for a little while and see if the contractions would pick up because I'd also heard that if you have any sort of distractions and things like that, it can um, make your contractions spread out and not progress as fast. So I was just trying to take away every single distraction to see if that would help progress and make the contractions closer together. So at this time, we also had called my mom already. She was on kid duty to watch the kiddos. And she got here, I don't know what time it was, but the sun was coming up. By this time, I'd been in labor for two hours, a little over two hours. And for me, that's usually like towards where I'm getting to transition. But actually, when she got here, I was in the kitchen helping my husband make breakfast for the older two so actually they woke up at 6 30 that day so she probably got here closer to 6 45 7 o'clock so she gets here and she's kind of like hmm why are you up walking around i would assume you would be in the water or something you know it doesn't look like you're in much pain. And so I reassured her that I'm having contractions. When they come, they're intense. They're just really far apart. And I think it may have been now that the kids were awake, 
just consciously having that thought that I'd be more comfortable if it if the kids weren't there for the birth. Just a lot of different distractions that maybe um, my body didn't want or didn't feel comfortable with, I guess. So I labored a little bit more just walking around the kitchen. Um, and then I decided after a few intense contractions in the kitchen where it made me stop what I was doing and take a deep breath and really focus on relaxing that I said, okay, I think I want to get in the water. So my midwife had been, you know, checking baby positions, baby's heart rate, all things were going well until I got in the water and she checked baby position and she said he isn't engaged anymore. He came up a little bit and turned. Other contractions, baby's head was low. engaged but you had said a couple contractions back that you had felt the movement mm -hmm. um, so that was probably baby coming out of that position so she was giving me a rundown of what we would do if baby was breech and she was very comfortable delivering a breech birth but just that things would be different so she was giving me a rundown of that so when she told me that it could possibly be a breech birth, depending on which way he turns next. At that point, I was trying to think positive and think, okay, maybe the water, because when I got in, you know, it lifts all that pressure off of my belly that, that made him disengage. I don't know if that's true or not, but I was thinking, I'm going to try to get out of the water and see if that gravity, when it pulls my stomach back down, if he'll be engaged again. So I got out of the pool and sat on the exercise ball and I had two really intense contractions. So I was really hoping that that got him in good position. So then she checked his heart rate and position again and things were great back to normal he was engaged again and my contractions were really hard at that point so i got back on to the couch to get into a comfortable position to help manage that pain Because when I was in that Bradley method, laying here face down with one leg up, I was the most comfortable, hardly felt any pain, but I still felt pressure building um, lower. So I knew things were still progressing, maybe just not as quickly as if I were sitting up or standing up. And I was totally okay with it taking a little bit longer, as long as the pain was managed so i laid back down on the couch head down with my leg out to the side and continued to have contractions so at this time it was maybe 9 15 because at 9 30 my mom took the kids out for a little while to just be out of the house and that's when things really progressed. I think I was fully able to relax once the kids left. So my contractions were getting closer together, but the pain was totally managed, which I thought was 
just amazing. I kind of want, wanted to be in that position the whole time instead of getting in the water, walking around the kitchen and feeling those almost, well, they were <laughs> painful contractions. Um, but I didn't know if I was progressing. So at this point I was confident the pressure is still building lower. So it's okay if my contractions aren't painful because I'm almost to that point where I need to push. So I was still laying here on the couch. My husband was on the chair here. The midwife was on the chair there and they were having conversation back and forth. And my midwife even asked if I wanted to go take a walk around the property. Um, she asked if I wanted to get up and walk around just to progress things because the two of them just thought I was wanting to take a little nap while things weren't progressing as fast. And in my mind, I wasn't speaking much out loud because I was focusing so much on trying to relax. Um, in my mind, I was just thinking, I don't think they know how far along I am. This baby's coming very soon because the pressure was so much that I almost had to push, but not quite yet. So I just stayed here silent, but both of them were right here. I knew as soon as I start pushing, they'll be ready. So I wasn't worried about that. I think Mark, even at towards the end when I was about to push, he was over in the cabinet looking for a good book to read. So I'm almost to the point to push. My midwife had asked when she got here if I wanted to catch the baby or if she wanted or if I wanted her to catch the baby. And because I caught our second baby and I'd also heard that if I'm the one that can feel baby come out, that I'm less likely to tear because I know where they are and I know they're safe and they're so close, maybe a contraction away, there's no need to push as hard as I can to get this baby out. Just let the contractions do the work. So I opted to catch Oliver. And so when I got to the point where I felt like I needed to push, I got onto all fours and let out like a low ooh sound. Um, and both of them, I could hear them get up and come closer. They started getting a shower curtain and towels on the ground because I don't think they thought I was in a comfortable position maybe here on the couch. They wanted me like, you know, on the floor or maybe somewhere to not get everything on the couch. So they were setting that up and after she set up the floor, she checked the baby again, checked position and heart rate. And at that point, I was even thinking like, next contraction, I'm gonna have to push. So hopefully this doesn't take long. <laughs> And so all fours was most comfortable for me and I was resting my head on the side of the couch to still help relax every single muscle. Cause at that point it was getting very hard to relax every single muscle. And they said, all right, let's move to the floor if you want to.
so I was thinking, okay, yeah, good idea. <laughs> Just in case, then I don't have to take apart the couch and wash everything. So I got on all fours right here by the couch and rested my head here on these cushions and felt that urge to push. So I started pushing just a little bit and that's when the water broke. That's consistent with my other two babies as well. My water doesn't break until uh, I'm pushing. So water broke, felt baby's head come out and baby, baby's head was actually out for a minute before I pushed the body out. I was waiting for that next contraction instead of using all my might to push baby out in hopes that I wouldn't tear. So next contraction came and that really helped baby come out a lot easier than if I were just pushing him out without letting the muscles do the work. baby came out, I caught him and put him on my chest. They wrapped towels around me, no cord around the neck. Um, everything looked great. He was doing great. And I think it was like 10 or 15 seconds before I even looked to see if it was a boy or a girl. <laughs> just kind of enjoying the moment like okay he's here he's in my arms everything's good he's healthy safe and then we looked and boy I was so surprised Mark thought it was a boy boys running his family um, but because Oliver's heart rate was on the lower side compared to my other two pregnancies and he was more on the calm side as far as kicking that I just thought he was a girl, but surprise. Um, yeah, he's starting to, the swelling's going down and he's not a redhead like my husband. He looks like a really good mixture of both of our kids so far. But overall, that home birth was longer than my second home birth, but less painful. The Bradley method helped so much. The day before labor, I did a mile circuit. Just one time through, I did the mile circuit, which I'd never done before, but that could have helped baby get engaged. I forgot to mention he was born at 39 weeks and six days. And with my second, she was born at 39 weeks on the dot and my first was born 40 weeks five days so we really had no inclination whether he would come before 40 weeks or after but he was seven pounds 15 ounces and 20 and three quarter inches long so just right around the same size as both of the other babies and overall my tearing was so minor that I opted to not get stitches and instead be in bed for five days. And today is my second day being able to come down the stairs once and later I'll go back up the stairs. So I can only go down the stairs one time. So it's one trip down and up. So I get to choose, you know, come down in the morning, relax on the couch, go back up at night um, for five days as well and then I should be pretty good to go. With the kids ages at Theo being a little over two and a half and Eve just turning two and a or just turning one and a half, their ages are really fun to see them interact with Oliver. Theo definitely realizes he has a little brother now versus when Eve was born. He was 
unsure of what she was, but with Oliver, he wants to hold him and be more involved. And Eve is the way that Thea was. She kind of is just like, oh, wow, this isn't a doll. I get to squish his face and give him kisses and he cries. So it's very cute to see their interactions with him as well. Well, I hope that this home birth story was encouraging, that sometimes the water is great and relaxing, but however you need to labor and birth the baby out is the way to go. Babies are a gift, a blessing, and a miracle. So however we get them into this world is just amazing. If you have any other questions or if I left out some big details, feel free to leave a comment below. We'll still be resting for a few more days and taking it easy. So our next video may not be for couple days to a week or so but if you're not subscribed yet that'd be great if you would subscribe to our channel give this video a like if you enjoyed it that way it can reach more people and share our page with a friend if they're thinking about doing home birth but kind of on the edge that it would be an encouragement to them. Thanks for listening to Oliver's birth story and hopefully we will see you next time on Dyson Days. Remember that's how mommy gave him food. Ooh, belly button. That's why you have a belly button. Look at his nose. Oh no. No.